Hey, everybody. I mean, by everybody being nobody, because nobody's here yet, but um, this will show up on replays and stuff, so I don't want to waste a whole lot of time for people to show up and uh, to get my, my multiple points out and across. So uh, today was an interesting day. Um, I have been working on this BRZ for a couple days that a guy brought me, and it... Um, he was worked on by somebody who's not really good at working on things, unfortunately. And they did a lot of stuff wrong. Uh, the car has a lot of issues. Um, and it took me two days to get it into a point where it would actually even start. Um, one of them was that they improperly installed the fuel injectors. And, uh, you know, that's, that's never a good thing if you do them wrong. Um, one of them, it, they actually, like, they folded the O-ring enough that it wasn't leaking until I touched the O-ring. Then it blushed out a bunch of fuel. Actually, that was Lane that touched it. But um, the other one was the wiring. The the pins for the connectors weren't even fully seated in the connectors, and they were stripped back so far and twisted together that the twelve volt power to the injectors and the signal to the injectors was shorted together, twisted together, and then taped together. Um, and the pins were even fully pushed into the connectors, so it was made in contact with the injector anyways. Um, you know the ECU was shorted to ground. Basically. Well, it was shorted to ground, but the uh, the signal to the injectors was shorted out. So that was bad. Um, and then the subframe wasn't even bolted tightly. It, a couple bolts were loose. The suspension was loose. The header wasn't even bolted all the way. The nuts were halfway down the studs. Um, and then the oil return line was JB welded or something into the oil pan with a rubber line wrapped in heat wrap laying against the header. Um, the heat wrap is one thing, but it ain't going to last, that's for sure. So that dude's got a severe um, or a highly likely chance of having major oil leaks and potentially a fire. Um, it leaks already around for like 10 minutes, working on tip in and getting the injectors going. He put 1050s in this thing, in this BRZ with a tiny Tomioka turbo kit. Like, there's no need to put injectors that big in it, but he did. Um, and so, unfortunately for me, as a tuner that makes tuning the port and direct injection together, really a fucking whore. I'm not going to lie to you about that. That's really a whore. Um, but the tip in it is just now starting to get pretty good. It still runs a little lean after in post-start. Sometimes hesitates a little bit. And once or twice it dies uh, right in post-start. So I still have to work on that a little bit, richen it up some. Um, it's got that blow through math that so many people do on the BRZ turbo kits, which is just horrendous. Um, I wish they didn't do that. Um, so uh, I use the ECU tech race from put it in speed density and I'm going to use that. Um, um, I might blend in the math a little bit with that just for some stability, some accuracy in the readings. But in the end, the car is going to be good. We're going to take the oil pan off of it tomorrow or Monday and try and uh, weld in a proper oil return line. And then get something metal and not rubber up against the header, right? So we're trying to get some metal run and get it off of the header and pull away from it. Right now it's like up against it, and that's just not safe. Um, I got my hair cut today. No more mullet. No more mullet. My hairline does not support the mullet. It just goes too far back. So that's gone. Careful with your background. Two of um, PPUs. Yeah, well, I got a lot of them. <laughs> and they're all around. I don't care. I don't care. They can, they can suck a fatty. Uh, it's airsoft. You know, it's airsoft, right? Um, but I appreciate your concern on that. Um, so, I dropped my phone again because I'm really good at that. Uh, so, the, the, the title of this video says, Put the Anxiety Port in the Glove Box. And the reason I'm saying that is, is because I got home and I had three emails. Um, two people who were tuned by somebody else asking me if I'd retune their car. And then one of them is a car that I tuned a while back. And he's telling me, I'm having issues with your tune. And he goes through and, and proceeds to tell me that he occasionally gets negative 1.41 and 2.8 when he's cruising in 5th and 6th gear. <sighs> Just breathe. <laughs> Just breathe. Yeah, so feedback knock in cruise is no big fucking deal. And in fact, it should happen on occasion. And if it doesn't, then frankly, your car is either tuned way too conservatively or the, boot, or the knock control system is not functioning. Um, one or two counts of knock is completely acceptable and should be expected. Um, if it's not, if it doesn't happen at all, then you're losing fuel economy, you're losing 
Um, uh, you're increasing the emissions because now you're burning too late. Um, you're, you're losing the potential torque, right? You're, you're losing out, and and the knock has no power behind you. You're not damaging anything. Um, the knock is only as powerful, and I've said this in many videos, but I'm gonna say it again so that more people can can that don't always sell my videos. Knock is only as powerful as the remaining air fuel mixture that's in the chamber when the knock event occurs. Now, knock occurs really close to peak cylinder pressure, which is typically around 20 or so degrees after top dead center. And that's the big problem is a lot of people misunderstand. I misunderstood that until I think 2010, I think. I didn't even fully understand knock. I thought I did. I thought I understood what it was. I thought it was the spontaneous combustion of the air and fuel mixture at or near the the spark event. That's what I thought knock was, and I'm wrong. I was wrong then. Um, but thanks to a book that Paul Yaw gave me um, around 2010 or nine, somewhere around that time, um, I got to see all kinds of cylinder traces. Got to read all kinds of articles. Got to go through this book from MIT, right? And I got to learn more about knock and realize that I was effing wrong. I was wrong. Knock is not the spontaneous combustion of the main air fuel mixture at any of the spark event. It's the spontaneous combustion of the main mixture around peak cylinder pressure. Um, I mean, it is, I mean, if it happened at the spark event, it would also be knock. But when you're getting a light level knock, when you're in cruise or whatever that is, that is not happening early. That's not pre-ignition. That is a very light knock that's happening right around peak cylinder pressure. Now, if you look at what's called the um, uh, mass fraction burned, which is how much of the mass that is that was injected into the cylinder, being air and fuel combined, how much of that is burned by the time that the knock event occurs, you will see that by 20 degrees, most of it's gone already. I think it's like 80% or 70% is already burned, right? So now we're talking like maybe 20 to 30% of what's left in the chamber that's available to, to release its energy and knock. Now, if you're in cruise, your inject duty cycle is like, 8% or 4% or based on your injector size, right? How big is it? Um, how much fuel and air is left in the cylinder when 30% is all that remains and you only had tiny little bit in the first place, right? Like nothing. And how much energy is in it? Hardly any at all. Like you are not going to damage your piston or anything with that light knock. It just ain't going to fucking happen. Doesn't make sense. Now, if you are in full boost, now that's a whole other story. Check your duty cycles, 80% to 100%, somewhere in that range. Like, there's way more fuel in there. There's way more energy available in the remaining air fuel mixture, even at 20 degrees after top dead center. Totally could do damage then, right? But think about it. Does it happen the first time the knock occurs? No, almost never, right? It usually takes hundreds of knock events, maybe even thousands, before a piston even fails from it, okay? Now, think about that. I can take a hammer and I can drop it on the screen of my cell phone lightly a thousand times and the glass would never break. But I got to hit it hard enough to get past that point for it to break, right? For it to actually break. Now, I could drop it an infinite number of times at the very light load, light little taps, with the hammer and it would not break, right? For the life, till the hammer wore out. But you hit it hard enough that something's going to happen, right? And it's very similar to that with knock. You give it the little little pink 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 light taps 20 after 20 degrees after top dead center there's only 30 percent left in the chamber at the most when your duty cycle is like eight percent like there's no fucking fuel in there. there's no energy in there the, the energy of the knock event is just minuscule pink tiny little thing okay nothing so don't email your tuner about it because you're really just showing that you're ignorant AF about the subject of knock and detonation or that you've let the internet program you in and like freaking out about it. Um, so this is where I come up with the title, put the anxiety port in the glove box. Plain fact of the matter is if you don't know what the fuck you're looking at on that screen, you shouldn't be fucking looking at it. Plain and simple. If you don't know what this, the readings are supposed to be, you should be looking at it. If you're ignorant to it, then what good does it do you have it there in front of you, right? Nothing. If you knew what all those fucking readings should be, if you knew what they were supposed to be and when they'd be there, tune your own fucking car. Right? If you knew what they were supposed to say at all times, if you knew what the air fuel would be all the time, you knew the time would be all the time, with the cam position would be all the fucking time, tune your own fucking car. Right? Like, 
Sorry, it's very frustrating when I get these emails from people that are like, oh, you got negative one for one. I'm like, well, I, I need to have it retuned. I really want my car to be safe on this fuel type. Well, I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, give me a break. So, put the anxiety report in the, in the glove box. You have no idea what the hell you're looking at. Just fucking leave it in there. Keep your eyes on the road. And not just that, but if you're staring at that fucking thing, you're not looking at the road when you're driving anyways. And uh, honestly, like, and if you look at the road and then glance at your port again, right, something happened at some point in time, and that point in time has passed. And the context in which that event happened is lost. And those values don't mean shit without context. AFR, 14.7 at idle, fucking perfect. AFR, 14.7 at full boost, not fucking perfect. That's a problem. AFR, 11.2 in boost, excellent. 11.2 at idle, that's a problem. Timing, 45, 50, 55 degrees in cruise, you're all right. Timing, 45, 55 degrees in full boost, something's really wrong. You know what I'm saying? So if you just glance and see that, oh, I had a peak of, of 70, I had a peak of negative 2, I had a peak of whatever, right? That, that You're not getting any context out of that. Like, there's no data there that's helpful. So, I mean, and the only other thing that you could potentially even look at is the dynamic advance multiplier or condition advance multiplier based on what system you're using, right? Your dam or IAM, right? And all that is is just an octane read, up, right? The, the history of the knock history of the car gives you what is basically an octane readout. Hey, your octane dropped a little bit. The car saw more knock. We pulled timing down a smidge. And now everything is groovy. That is exactly what the system is designed to do. If your system ain't at 1 all the time, so fucking what? Like, oh my god, did the system... Oh, my damn dropped to 0.8. Holy shit, my car's broken. No, dude. Your ECU is working and doing its fucking job. It saw something. It didn't like it. It's protecting your engine. There is not a fucking fault with that, all right? Maybe it's bad gas. Maybe you got a vacuum leak. That's fine. Is it necessarily tuned? No, not necessarily. Don't automatically assume it's a tuned. And even automatically assume that shit's going to blow up. It could have been that your AC compressor kicked on at the same time you were shifting, going up a hill, and that the squeak or the chatter or something banged and made the knock sensor hear that, that fucking noise because it hears noise. It doesn't hear knock. It hears noise, right? And that at the right time with the right load was enough to drop the dam Enough because the engine's like, oh, we're knocking. And it wasn't, right? So you don't fucking know. It's kind of it's kind of my point. So put the damn thing in the glove box. Don't sit there and stare at that. Don't use that fucking gauge pod mount where it goes in the vent on the left side that blocks the airflow to the window and shit. That's fucking trash. Get that out of there. And don't have that shit in the pod and take your tuner either. I can't put my cable in the side of it. Right? I can't put my cable in the side of it because your export's up against the A pillar in that fucking pod. And then if I pull it out, so I can't get my cable in the side of it. Well, now it's across the damn car. The cable's not fucking long enough. I can't use the cable that you brought. This expert's running a goddamn dash in this thing and held in there. Like, this is stupid. Don't do that. The stupid shit. Don't do that either. I guess this is now dumb tuning pet peeves. And here you go. Um, but yeah, so anxiety port in the glove box. If you don't know what the hell you're looking at, you shouldn't be fucking looking at it. That's just plain the way I feel about it. Um, what else are we going to talk about? Um, the BRZ. Now, with that being said, the BRZ, back to that again. Um, I'm using EC Tech on that. Fuck, I hate that software. It is so terrible. It is so counterintuitive. It is so cumbersome. It is just... I really hope they fucking improved it. Um, by now, they haven't. Like, it's so many steps to do just basic shit. You're like, come on. Now, it's got cool features. I mean, it, it has boost control for the BRZ built into it. That's freaking awesome. It's got, like, five maps that you can switch to. That's awesome. It's got flex fuel for the BRZ. That's awesome. It's got all kinds of cool features for it. Just their software sucks. I don't know if they like screwed it up a long time ago. And then we're like, well, everyone's used to this shit or keep like that. Or somebody that actually thinks it's good. I don't know which way it is, but it is not good. It is so counterintuitive and so cumbersome to do just basic shit. Well, you want to flash the ECU? Okay, we got to identify the ECU. Then you go over the tool thing. Then you get over the program you Like, it's just fucking give me a button. Like, click, flash. Everything else in the world has a flash button. But not them. You got to go through menus to get to the point where you can flash a fucking ECU. It's uh, really annoying. So, anyways, um, what else? I think that's it, really. I just want to say, put things in the glove box. Talk about stuff with the BRZ. I'm excited for it to actually get working here. Um, it should be fun once you get all the little stuff fixed. Turbo BRZs are a blast. Um, the GTR is getting closer. We're fixing a lot of problems. Oh, that's what I want to show you. That's what it was. I remember now. 
So this is a, it's a rendering of something I did. Let's see, is that showing up? Okay, it's showing up. That is, this is a flange to go from the T4 to the V-band of a GTX 35 or tile housing. Now, that's just the pipe, but that pipe is the appropriate size for this V-band, which is what the GTX goes to. Now, I, I don't have this as part of that because I can leave myself some room to manipulate it. But right now, the one that's there is about a three degree tilt off this axis um, to get the turbo to fit in what it's at. But the cool thing about this is, I mean, it, the price ain't cool. It's like 400 and something bucks to machine it. Which makes sense. I mean, it's it's going to be a solid block of 304 stainless that we have machined this out of. But I can do the cross-section on it and see, hey, look at this beautiful transition that I have in here. Um, there's no weld beads. There's no slag. There's no square flange going to a pipe that's pressed in. Right? This is a beautiful transition from the square flange of the uh, header into the round V-band of the... Um, of the turbo inlet here's the other one obviously it goes from square that's smaller in radius or in diameter than the uh the circle is here but uh yeah very nice and so i get like a near perfect merge out of this flange now the cool thing about this is that even though i make it tall enough to do the the degree taper on here i can i'm gonna have like four of these made i can still go up and i can cut it flat and put the flange on top again and have it just be a regular um adapter for T4 to um, to the V-band. So that's going to get machined here in the next week. It's going to take a little bit of time, but it's going to be cool. Don't put your AP on your FXT when you drive it. I mean, it should be in the glove box. <laughs> that way, if you do pop a check engine light or you decide you're going to like go somewhere, you want to valet mode that thing or something, like, you know, at least the glove box. It should be able to be used if needed. But if you're staring at that thing and you don't know how you're supposed to look at it, like, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. I'm doing something. There's a number. Yay. Like, I, I'm sorry. I don't get it. Anyway, so this is the flange I got uh, for the GTR. I designed a couple others. Um, we were, I was looking at the cost associated with the, um, the cost associated with making it and how well can I make them merge. This one's very short. Um, but I made it taller so I could add a little more merging depth to it. You see here, it's got a little more merged depth to it. Um, this one's about half as much to, to, to make, which is still good. So I, it's a pretty good merge. I mean, that's a that's a pretty solid merger. There, you see how smooth it is. So that's still pretty good. It's a little abrupt, but that's kind of what you have to deal with when you only have this much room to do it. Um, it was getting too thick, so I had to relieve it here. And then... Um, it's got a, a, a chamfer in it here or a countersink so that I can put a pipe in it while the pipe and then put the pipe at whatever angle I want and put the V-band on the pipe. So this one was half as much to make. It would still be very functional and work really well. Um, but with the amount of extra time to build this and finish it on the other one, this would be a great flange to sell. You know, I could sell this as a flange for people that need to go from a T4 to a V-band or to anything. You know, it'd be a good flange to sell. Um, universally, but for our, our our project right now, I can get four of those made. They'll work great for other projects too. And um, I don't need this guy, but this was a pretty cool one too. And then there's one more, and it was the shittiest one. Uh, which one was it? That's that one. That one. I might have left it. I might have got rid of it. Oh, this one. <laughs> Literally just. The merge and then the round, and that's it. And that one was this one was done. You can do it on a five axis um, uh, table, actually. A five axis uh, water jet or laser jet could actually do that with some abrasive. Um, our neighbor has a five axis, and so I made this so you could put it on the table and cut it with the head and make that work and do kind of the same thing. But see, it's pretty abrupt, and I didn't like how abrupt it was. So we're going with the other one. We're going with the with the tube one, which is going to be pretty cool. Thank you. Center console compartment. That's a good one, too. Yep, center console, glove box, whatever. It's all good. Anyways, wife said dinner's ready like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> so I should probably go eat that, and I want to eat that because it's going to be good. But um, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for listening to me rant because, uh, you know, that's what I like to do. And then um, 
again, you know, feel free to send me questions and stuff. And if you are getting 1.41, I'll listen to your question. And I will explain to you that it's not a big deal and calm down, that kind of stuff. But I just had to rant about it a little bit because it's frustrating that so many people have been misled by the internet and the forums and that kind of stuff that the stuff is bad. Oh my God, it's so bad. It ain't that bad. Like this, it's not bad. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Let it do its thing, you know? Like stop worrying about it. Just relax a smidge. That's really what I gotta say. So enjoy your cars, seriously. And, uh, and that's it. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Have a good evening, guys. And gals, if there's any.